Joe Madden, the former manager of the Rays, the Angels, and yes, the Chicago Cubs. Good morning. Good afternoon, Joe. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm wonderful. That was really a cool little piece you guys put together. I mean, I, I don't reflect on that stuff all the time, but when you hear it uh, put together like that, it really makes you stop. I mean, remember all those wonderful times back there, and it was the best five years ever. Well, Joe, I can tell you a lot of people in Chicago still miss you. Mitch Rosen sends his best, and obviously this time cool. of year in October, you, you end up reminiscing a lot. It's been five years since the Cubs have won a playoff game, so – you are definitely missed. One of the things that you've been very passionate about is this the collision between instincts and analytics and, and, and trying to have a little bit from your side a pushback on, on what analytics are used for, how they're utilized. I'm curious if you could just expand a little bit on, on how you'd like to see things adjusted as baseball goes into to the next wave. And, and, and if, if you had a chance to do it again, what kinds of things you would do to, to kind of marry those things and make sure that instincts were still valued uh, as much or more so than analytics? Well, let me see if I could explain that. Uh, first of all, I'm into uh, analytics. I'm into information. I've utilized it my whole career as a manager. Even before that, before it became popular, I was doing the same stuff. I didn't have all the cool names and all the, the abbreviations for different things, but I was doing the same kind of stuff for my managers, which was Terry Collins, Marcel Latchman, Terry Collins, and then, of course, so, so, I was doing that same stuff. I did not have the same sample size because it was just me. But nevertheless, a lot of the stuff that is being utilized, quite frankly, I was doing in my own meager attempts back in the mid-1990s. Um, so I want it. I want it, but like I kind of alluded to that, I want power back in the hands of the coaches and coaching staff and the manager. Uh, I want analytical. I want analysts, but I don't want them in the clubhouse, and I don't want them – running meetings. I don't want them. Uh, they are presenters. I get it, but I don't want them running meetings. I'd rather them give the information to coaches and have coaches bring it to the players. And then the analytical person goes back and starts preparing for the next day or for the next series. Uh, it's just gotten way out of hand with that. And that's probably my, my primary uh, objection. And um, yeah, I would, I would want that to be exactly that. If you're the defensive coordinator, I'd want you to have a defensive analyst that, that answered to you. You guys will come up with the game plan. Everything's done. You say, thank you. The coach does, and he goes downstairs and relays it to the players. Same for the pitching coach, same for the hitting coach, et cetera. There's so much interference in preparation for the game, and you're seeing it a lot in a lot of the, the, the kind of narrative or conversations that are carried on post-game. A lot of the ma managers are get, getting blamed for different decisions that they make. And I'm telling you, that's all group think. That's all decided among the group before the game begins. Uh, there are so many voices in the back of your head when you're managing a game anymore. It's difficult to really put your own uh, stamp on things. Um, it's true. It's just true. And I'm, I'm not uh, making stuff up. I hear I talk to a lot of guys, and I've got a lot of feedback based on what I'm telling you right now. So I want it. I want to put it back in its place. I want analytics serving baseball and not the other way around. Talking with Joe Madden, who wrote the book of Joe, along with Tom Verducci, David Hahn, Dan Weeder in for – Danny Parkins and Matt Spiegel. Parkins and Spiegel here on the score. Joe, obviously, so I wonder this. When you talk about mm -hmm. the, that, um, the, how the balancing act is for a manager in the analytics, I think you stated it well. How close uh, what, did, did the Cubs front office come to interfering with you doing your job in retrospect? Was that always a very clear line that defined what their role was and what your role was, or was it, was it sometimes blurry? No, uh, in the beginning, it was wide open, man. I, I had um, Theo and Jed. It was great. Uh, we have an They had an analytical department there, good guys, uh, good stuff. And I had some really, two really superstars downstairs, and Nate Holm and Brad Mills, and then Tommy uh, Hadebe became the pitching coach. That's, those are the guys that really relied upon. I'll just give you an example. I'll get a scouting report. I wanted my PDF file sent to me in the morning. Everything that I needed to know that I work off of during the game would be sent to me a.m., I get up, I go down to Cafecito, my little coffee shop there on Chestnut, <laughs> and I put my music on and I go over my PDFs. And I knew exactly what I needed to know before I went to the ballpark. I didn't need to go and sit in a concrete bunker and attempt to uh, ascertain what I needed to know then. I furthermore been doing it for several years, you know? So um, there's not a whole lot of new stuff. I don't, they, they want to make you believe there is, but there's not. And analytics, the really primary uh, uh, superstar component is, and is acquisitional. That's where I would never uh, dispute it. That's where that's you want as many analysts as you want, as you can possibly get, but you don't need it before every game. You definitely don't need more information before a playoff game. So that's those, that's, there was a great group. 
I utilize them before the game. If I was, and, and the video room was right next to my office there. If I had a, a question, I'd walk in to ask either Nate or Brad or Tommy, whatever at that time or now I'd say, show me this. I'm confused right here. Give me an example of what we're talking about here. And they pull it up on the screen or they pull something down. And right before the game, Nate and, uh, and Brad would come in and Nate was with the hitting and Brad with the pitching and we'd go over to the matrix and they would tell me where they disagreed with the number that it was either too high or too low, stuff like that. See, I, I'm an absolute proponent of this, but done right, I'm into it. When it becomes overbearing, I'm not. Joe, you heard that that very cool highlight montage before you came on, and obviously you know as well as anyone what was accomplished over those those five years here. Obviously, the culmination of that is is Game Seven in Cleveland, and that's what what people are going to talk about forever in this city. But that's a culmination of a a 27 day postseason run in 2016 that was pretty event filled. You know, starts with Lester versus Cueto at Wrigley, ends on that uh, late night in Cleveland. I'm, I'm curious those 27 days and that ride. What now, these six years later, resonates with you? And, and what's your greatest takeaway from that ride of, of that postseason? Uh, I think, first of all, game four against the Giants. That was the pivotal point. Um, I don't think that gets enough uh, attention to come back and win that game and get rid of the Giants right there. Uh, permitted everything else to happen. Yeah. That, that, to me, was uh, that was it. I, that game that night, I did not want to see Cueto again. Uh, if you look up our numbers versus him, uh, not very good at all. And he was going to do it again. We would have to pitch him on another night in Wrigley, and I didn't really want to count on that. Another one was the KB home run uh, down 3-1 to one in, at Wrigley, yeah. uh, where that gave us, that put us back in, and then eventually winning that game, which permitted us then um, <clears throat> to get back to um, to Cleveland. So that that's that was incredibly important. And the fact we were down three games to one and won the World Series, uh, you know, that doesn't happen very often. And again, that's another narrative that's not discussed, which really uh, speaks to the resiliency and the toughness of that group. You could talk about Game 7, which demonstrated everything. But the uh, Cub game, and the Giant game, KB's homer, and, it, and the fact that this group came back from three games to one in the other team's ballpark, um, that to me really indicates the toughness of this group. Talking with Joe Madden here on The Score. He wrote The Book of Joe with Tom Verducci. Joe got asked, the White Sox are looking for a manager. It's an ongoing story. I know at the risk of sounding redundant, I have to see. Would you sh- would you have interest in the job? Have they reached out to contact you about the job? And would anything about your past preclude you from working in Chicago again? No, um, I love Chicago. I'd work there tomorrow in a heartbeat. I've not been uh, contacted by the White Sox at all. I don't really know what their intentions are. Um, there are several teams that I would really be interested in, but I think, quite frankly, what I'm saying to you right now and those that have read the book or even the Sports Illustrated um, segment, probably that may push some people away, but then again, it might be a couple that are attracted by that. It's almost like I'm interviewing right now just by talking to you guys. And that might be brash. I don't know how you want to um, uh, label that, digest that, uh, whatever you want to call it. I'm just being honest about it. I Love to do it again under the right set of circumstances with the right group uh, where I would see, I would want a superstar group of coaches, uh, guys tried and true, guys that have done it before. I think baseball ops and and, uh, analytical departments are way overstaffed, way overbooked. There's just not that much stuff going on. Uh, Whereas if you, if you give, uh, if you hire enough guys, they're going to sit around and think of other things to present that really don't have anything to do with winning or losing the game that night. Uh, Like I said earlier, acquisitionally, if you have a great analytical department that puts together stuff that permits you to make good decisions in the off season, so you get the right players to play for you during the season, that's, that's the separator and the depth that you can build at that time of the year, that's the separator. So I think the numbers get way too much credit for wins and losses, not enough credit for bringing people in the building. And I'd rather see the money spent on baseball ups, meaning people on the field, uh, coaches and staff on the major league level and really, the part that's really been underutilized and, and really um, stalling out to the point of concern is the minor leagues and the minor league staff and what's being taught there. And the game's not being passed on. Uh, I had the best mentors in the world as a young uh, coach, aspiring coach in the Angel organization. I don't know that there's enough people out there coaching the coaches anymore. And that's a big concern of mine. Joe, just as a quick follow-up, if the White Sox haven't reached out, have there been other teams that have reached out to you about being their manager in 2023? No. 
Not, no, not, no, have not. What is your urgency to, to manage again? And, and, and how patient are you willing to be and wait for a fit that you deem to be ideal for you? Well, somebody told me you should wait at least a year. <laughs> so that would be the middle of next year. Um, I don't know. I, I'm, um, I'm weighing everything. I'm just being very honest and pragmatic about it. I, um, uh, I, I, I can't, I won't work under the circumstances that I have over the last several years. Um, it's just getting to the point, like I said, where it's not real baseball anymore. Um, and it's not just me. I'm, listen, I'm, I'm speaking on behalf of a lot of people right now. Um, uh, and I'm in a position that I, that I can, a lot of folks are in a position where they cannot. Um, so that's it. Um, I'd love to write folks, write philosophical, uh, content, uh, empowering managers and coaches again, supplementing them with brilliant people in the background, playing real baseball, not worry about making it out on the basis. Sometimes it happens. Um, and, and that's, that's one of the things that, you know, the, well, all of a sudden everybody wants people to bunt a couple of years ago. If you bunt it, you'd have some analysts downstairs afterwards. And the same thing with somebody getting thrown out on the basis. <laughs> Say you put a hit and run play on and all of a sudden it breaks down and somebody gets thrown out. There's always a question asked after the game. Joe, Voices before we let you go, back of your head up, go away. Yeah, right. just real quick before we let you go, you mm-hmm. appreciate all your sure. time. I know you'd be content going back to Hazleton and buying people shots and a beer and uh, and, <laughs> and seeing all the friends and and being very comfortable. You don't need the spotlight. You don't need the the work necessarily. But if you don't manage, would you consider being in a studio, being in a booth? Does a role in the media appeal to you because of how comfortable you are doing it? I'm, I'm actually doing podcasts right now with uh, Tommy Verducci. We're on iHeart. Uh, we're doing two a week right now, and I'm also doing once a week with Sirius. Um, I've gone with uh, Brad Lidge and CJ Nitkowski once a week as of now, and I'm enjoying that. I, I need to keep my thoughts uh, going. I need to stay in present tense when it comes to the industry. Um, I can't let that stuff slide because all summer I didn't watch one game. I didn't watch one game all summer. And so once we contracted to do these different things, I started getting back up to speed. It's interesting, but I, right now I'm not really fascinated with putting a suit on and traveling anywhere. And I'm not, I'm not really the one that I want to interview people. I, I don't mind uh, having a conversation like we are right now. Actually, I enjoy it. But I'm not that guy, I don't think, right now. I haven't had enough time to understand the interview process and how I would do that. So these are my thoughts. Um, so right now, um, my golf game's gotten better. Um, I was I, I played. I was playing nine holes, multiple balls before I had to come in and talk to you guys. And it's like forty five degrees here today. I'm loving every second of it. So I got things going on. I got thoughts. I got uh, ambition. But for right now, um, with with regards to baseball, I have to be asked first, and I have to be asked by the right people. That's great, Joe. And I think it, it makes a lot of sense. And it comes to mind only because here in Chicago, you're well familiar with the landscape. Ozzie Gian is one of the most dynamic media personalities in town. I happen to think mm-hmm. Ozzie Guillen would be a great choice to be the next White Sox manager. There seems to be sure. no interest in Ozzie Guillen to be back in the dugout for whatever reason. Do you understand that? Can you help us understand that here in Chicago? Well, wisdom wisdom, and uh, experience are no longer desired. Um, it's a controllable asset that everybody's looking for. Um, if you really are of your own opinion, and uh, you have a, a method and, uh, you know, managers were, were autonomous. Managers ran things. Um, they were in charge of getting their coaching staff, hiring their coaching staff. I've already been contacted by a team about potential hitting coaches that don't even have a manager yet. So when people tell you, um, you know, they, they want the manager to choose their own coaches, it's not true. Um, everything wants, needs to be controlled. And, and that's where Ozzy, you're not going to control Ozzy. And I don't think, you know, the next opportunity I get, I, I don't want to use have that word used around me either. Um, it's wisdom, experience, feel. Um, there are terms that people, if you don't understand what that means, you're not going to seek that uh, within your ranks. And I think that's the problem, quite frankly. And so uh, years to come, how about this? I, I had it this thought, not if you have a minute or a second. Um, I think that's even trending to the point where baseball may just want a head coach and not a manager anymore. Because it's gone from manager to middle manager. Why not just have a head coach with a headset on? You pass rules where are permitted analysts are permitted to talk to the head coach during the game. Just watch the NFL. It happens all the time. Um, so I don't even know if it's trending to a head coach because certainly uh, managers are really few 
and far between, and it's more about middle managing right now. Joe, that's great stuff. This has been a lot of fun. Thank you so much for your time. Looking forward to having you in town next month at the Union League Club on November 16th. That's going to be fun. Uh, promoting your book with Tom Verducci, The Book of Joe. When it comes out, everybody needs to go out and read it. Joe, thanks so much. Appreciate it, man. Thanks. Thanks for listening. Uh, wish you all the best and hope to see you then when I get in town. Looking forward to it. Hit him straight.